All right, um, let's see, for remote students, uh, it looks like only Ella's here. Okay, anyway, if you're a remote student, and I'll get back to you in a second, in a folder for the week of 315 or 319, there's a lab that says aluminum and chlorine, or aluminum and copper limiting reactant percent yield lab. This is a lab that students are doing today in class. And then in a few minutes, or in a little bit, probably like 10 minutes, I'll go over some problems about uh, the limiting reactant practice from yesterday. But the video for the lab isn't ready quite yet. Uh, should be ready during third period. So anyway, the lab describes like what the lab experiment is. You can do the pre-lab questions no matter what. And then uh, you can read through the materials and the safety part in the procedure. But there will be a video made, uh, and I'll post the video showing the procedure for the lab and including some data. And part of the problem with the data is the mass, the filter, and solid product. It won't be able to be available until tomorrow anyway, because you have to let the uh, product dry. So it'll be available tomorrow. But the video will show like the observation and stuff like that. So just give me like, I don't know, 10 minutes, and I'll get back to you. All right, I'm just talking to like remote students. OK, so this uh, lab, on the lab table, is a bunch of stuff. And you're going to do a reaction between uh, aluminum and uh, copper chloride. Copper chloride is in the bottles and it's like a blue colored solution. And then there's little pieces of aluminum foil. So the first thing you can do in the pre lab, write the, write the reaction, it's a single displacement reaction between aluminum and copper chloride. So when aluminum reacts with copper chloride, what, are the, what should the product be? And if you were to react uh, half a gram of aluminum with 0 0.04 moles of copper chloride, which should be the limiting reactant. Will aluminum be the limiting reactant or will copper chloride be the limiting reactant? And it doesn't matter which of the two products you pick, but the thing you're going to collect in the experiment is copper. So it might be smart with a half a gram of copper and the 0.04 moles of copper chloride, how much do you actually end up with? So what's the theoretical yield? In other words, how much product of copper should you end up with? All right, on the tables, all materials are provided. Um, a thing I'll say is that copper to chloride. One of the things we haven't dealt with is how you work with uh, quantities that are in solution. And we're going to get to that in the class. 
But what you're going to see is on the bottle, it's labeled 0.8, then a capital M, copper chloride. And what the 0.8 M means is 0.8 molar. So the deal is when you make a solution, uh, it's like you could take a gallon of water and just put a little sprinkle of salt in it, or you can put a whole bunch of salt in it. And no matter how much salt you put in, it's still a solution of salt water. But how much salt is in the water depends upon how much, how much salt you put in per volume of water. So you don't know much about what 0.8 molar means yet, but if you, if you uh, take 50 milliliters of 0.8 molar copper chloride, uh, that gets you the quantity 0.4, oh, excuse me. I hope you wrote that right. Yeah. 0 0.04 moles of uh, copper chloride. You might actually guess that how you get 0 0.04 out of 50 and 0 0.8 is 50 milliliters is 0 0.05 liters and 0. Uh, 05 liters times 0.8 molar is equal to 0 0.040 moles. So all I'm telling you is that if uh, you've got 50 milliliters of 0.8 molar copper chloride, that is the 0 0.040 moles of copper chloride described on the first page. All right, one thing you want to change in the procedure there, it says 0.2 grams, make that 0.5 grams. Because it turns out on the first page, it's 0.5 grams. So in the procedure number two, it shouldn't say 0 0.2, it should say 0.5 grams. And on the table, there are little squares of aluminum foil that are like this, and they're about 0.5 grams. So here's the thing. You don't have to have, this does not have to be exactly 0.5 grams. A lot of times in science, like it doesn't matter how much you use, but it's important to know how much you use. Meaning like, this could be 0.4 grams or 0.6 grams. Doesn't make any difference at all. But you definitely need to weigh it. Uh, to make sure that this is exactly 0.5 grams, you might have to tear off little bits over and over again until it's just right. But then in the end, the calculation doesn't matter anyway. What's important is you know how much it weighs. So whatever the square, the aluminum foils on your table, that's fine. So where it says mass out about, it should say 0.5 grams of aluminum foil, record the exact mass of the data table. What's important is that um, the mass of the aluminum foil in grams, you can carefully record that with all the digits and the balance calculated. So the plan is uh, you take the aluminum foil and you put it in with copper chloride, a reaction is going to clearly take place. You're going to see it happen before your eyes. And not to say like it's magic, but that piece of aluminum foil, there will not be aluminum foil when you're done. Instead, your beaker is going to have copper at the bottom of it, solid copper. So make the reaction take place in a little uh, beakers, 150 milliliter beakers on the table. Now the problem is you end up with a kind of like a mess. I'll draw like what's going on. So you start out with, uh, I just lost the thing. I'll draw it on the thing. So here's like your beaker. You've got some copper chloride. This has CuCl2. You take your strip of aluminum foil. And you stick that in. And as a result, you end up with a beaker that has um, aluminum chloride and a bunch of copper in the bottom of it. And you got to know how much that copper weighs. Well, the issue is you got copper, it's all wet, sitting in a solution that's got a bunch of copper chloride in the bottom of a beaker. So there's a bunch of separatory techniques that we use in chemistry. And one of the easiest separatory techniques is uh, filtration. And this you can do with gravity filtration, which is pretty simple. So we have filter funnels and filter paper that allow you to filter. Uh, the filter funnels are specially made for this size filter paper. The filter funnels themselves have a very tiny lip on the inside that holds the paper in. But you don't do this. You don't like jam it down in there like that. That's not how that works. The filter paper itself is 
specially cut to be in a perfect circle, you fold it in half like hot dog. It's not really like hot dog, whatever. You fold it in half, give it a good score, and that's still not what you put in there. And you fold it again, it makes like a nice uh, cone. And then the deal is, you gotta, like there's four layers. One of the layers, you can then open it up to a cone. And that filter paper not only fits in there, but it fits snugly against the inside and the lip holds the paper in. The dimensions of the, the dimensions of the filter paper and the dimensions of the funnel are perfect. You actually want the paper to touch the plastic. It allows it to wick through faster. If there's a gap between the paper and the plastic with this air, the water doesn't run through. It's like, some of you ever experienced this. If you ever go camping in a tent and it's raining, never touch the underside of the tent. If you touch the underside, water will like come through the fabric and it'll even like drip into the tent. You know about that? You know about that. But it'll like run through Whenever you uh, have something that's saturated with water, you touch the underside of it, the water tends to run through pretty easily. Or it's even like a, I mean, it's kind of like that if you're outside in the rain, but if you have like a thin jacket on, wherever it like touches your skin, it all well, feels clammy and disgusting. But there's another little trick here. When you have a funnel in this orientation, this one side has only one layer of flat paper. This other side has three layers of paper. So, the water funnels much faster through the one layer than those through three. So there's a way to make the funneling go faster. I'll put it. And you gotta kind of be careful about this, but when I have the funnel like that, you can see that I've got the nice funnel part and it's it won't let solids through. But all this extra paper up here, this is all kind of like a bunch of extra paper the water's gotta get through. So if you hold the funnel or the cone like that, you see all this extra, you can tear this extra paper off parallel to that crease like that. Now, I still have that nice cone and on this side, it's still watertight, but instead of it being three layers thick the whole way, it's only one layer thick. Now, when I put it back in the funnel, uh, it still fits tight against there, and it's one layer all the way from here around to here, only for just that little bit, is it three layers thick? And it makes the funneling go much faster. And then the funnels are designed to just sit in an Erlenmeyer flask. So you just like throw a 125 or 250 Erlenmeyer flask, set your funnel in there. And when you have your solution, once the reaction is finished with the beaker, like that green solution with the red copper in the bottom, you just pour it in. But then the deal is the underside of the beaker is going to have copper stuck in it. So on the lab table, there's also a squirt bottle that says uh, distilled water. You can like hold the beaker, squirt water up inside and wash all the copper into the paper. So how you end up finding out how much mass the uh, copper has is that once the water's all run through and you have copper on the paper, you can weigh the copper on the paper. So the paper is still going to be wet today. You can't weigh it today. You got to weigh it tomorrow. But once you take it out and then you uh, hold it flat, you'll have a nice like piece of paper with a bunch of copper on it. You can weigh it. So what does that depend upon? Well, if you're going to weigh the copper on the paper, it's important that you know how much the paper weighed when you start. So when you fashion your paper, and if you decide to tear some off or not, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. You need to put your initials or your name on the paper and in pencil, because if you use pen, it could like get damaged because the water runs through it, especially if it's like a gel pen. You write your name in pencil on the edge or put your initials or whatever. And then you need to weigh the piece of paper. So the plan is, is that when you have your piece of filter paper, it's like if this is your filter paper and you have like your initials on the edge and you find that the mass of the paper is one point like two three grams then tomorrow like when you have the pile of copper on there you find the mass is like you know 1.79 grams the paper and the copper you just subtract the mass of the paper from the paper with the copper but if you don't weigh the paper in advance you kind of can't know uh 
there are places where error exists in this lab, and I want you to pay attention and watch it and do the experiment. Why the percent yield might not be 100%? What, what kind of influences would cause the percent error to be, or the percent yield to be greater than 100%? And then there are other influences that cause the percent yield to be uh, less than 100%. This is one I ran this morning, so to show you like what you kind of end up with, here's my guess. So here now that's like got a pile of copper on the paper, but it's still all wet and stuff. You shouldn't really touch it because it's got copper chloride. Um, yeah, so I, I gotta get the goggles out. You gotta wear goggles, and if you're you know, you shouldn't like really get your fingers in it and whatnot, but the copper chloride, uh, you're gonna handle it, use uh like gloves. And I'll have a, I'll put a waste container on the middle table, and I don't know what else is on the tables. Oh, there's also like a little stir rod. The stir rod can help you like with the reaction. If you mess it up and you want to do it a second time, that's okay. We got lots of aluminum foil, lots of copper chloride. So the goal right now is to like weigh up the paper, weigh up the aluminum foil, make the reaction take place, get the copper collected. It should work out okay. Yeah. 